Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're talking about some updates to old favorites. Hi, my name is Guy Training and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today I want to talk about some apps that we talked about a long time ago in different shows and they've gotten some interesting updates so it's worth talking about. And the first one I want to talk about is the screencasting app called Shadow Puppet. And in Shadow Puppet uh, is a great way to create a screencast. And we've talked about a lot of them. We talked about edu creations. We talked about a lot of other apps. So this is not new. What I do like about Shadow Puppet is they created an EDU version that really has a lot of nice features. So when you start a new one, you give them uh, access obviously to your camera roll so you can add new things and then you can take a few pictures let's take some pictures from our visit to China again and one two three four five so we've got some uh, photos in there and now they would like access to the microphone so we can talk through this and we say yes and you can see that I can add here text so we can add uh, text, for example, hello, I like that actually, as a start out. And you can see that you can control the font and you can control how it comes in and out. Um, I like zoom, so we'll use that. And you can see that this is easily manipulated and you also don't have to do it, so you can very quickly create something. And I'm going to the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And now uh, I've seen this is the order that I want it to have. And now all I have to do is press the start button and you can draw, you can zoom in, you can move to the next uh, slide while you're doing this. So sweet, let's go. And you can see the recording countdown. This is our first talk at uh, the elementary school in Sichuan province. Um, this is a classroom of students working uh, on math and while they're working on math they're using the iPads for calculations and you can see that this is work on Chinese and you can again zoom out here and some more students at work students giving each other feedback and you can see that you can also add things, so I'm going to just use that to create a sign or you can use an emoticon that comes and disappears. You can uh, use all of these things on the actual movie and here I am and now it's saved. So now we've got a just about 60 second video and what you can do is you can actually share it in a variety of ways. You can email it, you can use Seesaw which is another app from the same company which we'll talk about at another time. Uh, Twitter, iCloud, you can even upload it to uh, YouTube. Um, in my case I'll just say I'll share it later. What it is important to know is it immediately saves into the camera roll. So if you want to watch it I can watch it here. Or you can go out of here and go to our photos. So my photos are here on the bottom and it should be saved. Let me see where my collections go. Here it is today and this is a video. So this is also saved as a video and therefore can be shared in all the regular ways that you can share through your iPad and not through that app. So there's multiple ways to use that video that you've created on Shadow Puppet. But I want to show you one more feature and that is you can do map search. So you can actually search for a location and add that to your presentation. You can search in Education, Library of Congress, the Museum uh, of Art, British Library and all of that. You can also do a web search for images. So let's say I'm looking for um, pictures from China, photos from China. You can see that the first thing that comes up is maps. But after that we get the Great Wall. We, I haven't seen the Great Wall so that would not work. 
uh, but uh, here is something we saw and so you can start selecting those and those will be arranged in in that presentation you're creating and you can see that you can also see them a little bit bigger so you can see whether they're uh, helpful or not. You can use the Creative Commons on Flickr so you know these are uh, images you can use for educational purposes and you can use the reorder button to decide which order do you want these. So you hold and you can shift those around very very easily and then you go next and then you do the same kind of recording that we did before. So what we love about Shadow Puppet is that ability to communicate with Seesaw, is that ability to share in multiple ways and the fact that we can do a search that's embedded right in there so you don't have to go outside the app to do a search. That means that it's easier to use with kids with less experience and it's very, uh, very quick to get a result. And again, they can talk through it, but you don't have to. Teachers can use that to also create mini lessons and deliver them to students. But what we're really trying to focus on more and more is students creating the videos, students being in charge of the process because their learning and their understanding is considerably deeper at that point. So this is Shadow Puppet EDU and you can see that icon, it's blue. It's uh, the same uh, bunny as all the shadow puppets, but it's on a blue background with the EDU on the corner. So that's a way to differentiate it. Um, the, just a brief plug, um, I don't use uh, Google Class right now, but one of the great things that has happened is Google has released an app for Google Class. So now you don't have to run it from your browser, which was not always the best solution for Google Class. It now works as an app, native app on the uh, iPad, great help to those who are using uh, Google Class. And if you're not using Google Class and you've got classrooms of iPads, it's a great entry point into Google Class because it'll work very well on your iPad. The next app I want to talk about is called Sticky Board 2. We used and we talked about Sticky Board 1 and Sticky Board 2 is very much the same. I'm talking about the free edition. There is a paid edition that can do a little bit more. Uh, what's great about this app, it's very easy to maneuver. It's great for planning and for uh, working in groups. It works best if you have a, a room to project. So right now we're using a TV. You can use a projector as well. So the, uh, the other participants can see it and what you do is you can drop a note. This is a new note and this will say a so you create a little bit of text or a lot of text. You can also use the pencil tool. The pencil tool is used mostly to connect between the notes or to write just on the whiteboard. So use it like any other whiteboard. Um, I love the fact that it's a very simple uh, tool. Uh, and if you need to erase, you just click on the eraser and erase and that's gone. But this is very easy, very quick to use, um, no time. Uh, to figure a lot of features out and that's something I like about some apps for brainstorming, for doing planning, is I don't want to spend a lot of time, I don't want a lot of bells and whistles, I just want it to work and Sticky Board 2 definitely works and very very clear. The one feature that I like is the board is fairly large and you can just zoom in and see exactly what the text is and you can zoom out and see the larger structures. So this is Sticky Board 2. So today we talked about really three apps that uh, really present new features and new ways of interacting and new ways of planning and we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.